Well, hello everybody and welcome to another Friday Live and Finley. I think you've been sitting there waiting since last Friday, haven't you, to make sure you're first on. Um, well, uh, first of all, guys, I must say, today we've been having an absolute nightmare with the internet, okay? So we usually get about 30 to 40 megs per second. We're on about 10 megs upload, uh, sorry, download, and about four megs upload. And obviously the upload speed is important for this. We need ideally 15 megs to be running smoothly on here. So we're about a third of what we should be. It may get better, I don't know what's wrong with it, but um, uh, if there is any uh, problems with the quality, then I do apologize. There's nothing I can do about it. We'll just have to watch it all in low def. So uh, wow, lots of people joining already. I hope everybody is all well. I hope nobody's died or turned into a, a zombie yet. Um, right. Uh as always, guys, we are here for you. I've got a few things to talk about. A couple of um, semi-giveaways, if you like. Um, uh, a couple of questions. We've got Alex's book review. We've got it in again this week. We've got a review of the uh, the multiplying ones uh, from Jason. Um, and, yeah, a few things to talk about. So uh, let's see who's joining us first of all. So Otter's there. Um, hello, Otter. I hope all is well. Finally, the best part of the work week. Uh, Prop Dog Live, uh, says Otter. Um, yeah, I, I'm guessing some guys are back at work. So uh, I'm not sure. Some people are back. Some people are not. Um, so, yeah, let's see what's going on with that. Uh, Brian Robson's there. Says, says hello. Uh, Brett says hello. Dave and Bobo. Oh, have a good yawn there, you Bobo. Um, Hello, David Harris from Van Buren. Uh, he also says hello, Bobo. Um, uh, Andy Tingley. Uh, Andy! Um Oh, thank you. So I got a little secret package in the uh, the post today. Uh, not today, sorry. Um, uh, this week. When was it? It was uh, it was Tuesday. Um, uh, a little gift. Uh, a couple of very big, large uh, packets of wine gums from Andy Tingley. So um, uh, thank you, Andy. Um, they were delicious. Um, uh, yeah, uh, they've all gone. So uh, Jason had some. Mila had some. Um, so uh, yeah, that's very kind of you. Thank you. Uh, right. Um, uh, Jason and Mila aren't in, by the way. Well, Mila's uh, partly in during the week. Uh, she's coming in, helping out the best she can. Jason's still at home. Um, he's on lockdown. He just popped in once the other day. Um, Jason can't get in uh, public transport. It's just not worth him being in at the moment. So he's staying on lockdown. Um, so yes, uh, but it's getting a lot easier now. Mel, uh, Mila's in. Um, she's not here now, but um, yeah, it's, uh, it's making my life one hell of a lot easier, I tell you. Uh, Peter Burke says, says, hi, Prop Doggers. Hello to you, Peter. And uh, hello, Jack Johnson, Michael Cooley. Hi, Dave. Hope you're well. And to you too. Sean Mack, hello. Michael Brimmer, James Chin, Andrew Vaughan, Chris, Sean Mack. Uh, like the new doggy mask. Yeah, so uh, guys, um, if you've seen during the week... Um i got a few face masks um, made up um, so that the people who do the printing on the fabric for our custom close-up pads, that, all this kind of stuff over here, um, I got them to print up some uh, face masks for us. And um, uh, they're a little expensive, so I didn't get too many. I just got um, uh, eight small, eight large in, thinking we might sell one or two of them. And they sold out straight away. Um, who would have known? So I've ordered more in. Um, there'll be more in... Well, they're slow on printing because of the the whole corona thing. So maybe next week, I don't know. Yeah, maybe next week early, hopefully Monday, Tuesday. Um, trying to think when the last lot arrived. So yeah, probably be anywhere between Monday and Wednesday, hopefully they'll be in. But uh, I put some more back on the website um, for pre-sale if you do want to buy them in advance. Um, purely that way, I hello. Uh, I know that uh, if by Sunday we've already sold out before they arrive, I can order more in, in advance. Uh, and we do, uh, or we can do some custom printed ones as well. So I've already had one customer I've made some custom printed ones for. So if you do want face masks and you want some cool design, maybe a big open mouth or a, a dog tongue hanging out or something weird like that, uh, or a playing card coming out, let me know. Uh, it's a minimum of four masks. So uh, yeah, we can get that done. Uh, but other than that, no dodgy dogging masks um, to show off at the moment, Sean. Uh, Charlie's there. He says, uh, hello, Dave. Hope you're well. Hello, Charlie. Uh, good to, uh, to to kind of see you or semi-see you there, you know what I mean. Um, John Gorner's there. He says, hello. Uh, Paul Armstrong. Mask arrived this morning, Dave. Really comfortable. Check out girl in all. He thought it was great. Thank you. I'm glad you like it, Paul. You know, it's got, uh, I put the seven of hearts on there as well. The seven of hearts being the, the, the main one right in the middle in the front is, as you know, probably one of the most commonly called cards next to the Ace of Spades and the Queen of Hearts. So I thought somebody might be able to use that in a in a gag somewhere or uh, in a little um, a trick. I mean, there are possibilities of creating some kind of 
uh, trick mask, I don't know quite how, maybe you have the backs of all the cars and you kind of put your hand over and move it and there's a car there right around or something, I don't know, there's a possibility there for somebody to create some kind of cool effect with. Um, George Grayson Zay says hello, hello to you uh, and to uh, Andrew Cooper. Uh, Brian says uh, that hard pad I bought is absolutely amazing. Um, good, glad you like it Brian, uh, we do our best, uh, we can't take all the credit. Uh, although we are making them, uh, the original idea for all the pads come um, from um, 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 uh, Jordan Murphy. Sorry, Jay. Sorry, Jordan, if you're watching, I forgot that. Um, JM Authentics, uh, yeah, Jordan Murphy, he was the original creator of the pads. Uh, we took over making some of them for him and eventually purchased the rights to produce them. So, um, uh, although a lot of the velvets and, uh, and the materials have changed, the, the same format of making them is Jordan's original one uh, with a few tiny improvements from us. So I can't take all the credit from that. But uh, Jonas is there, he says hello, as does Graham Weber, Adam and Brian. Hello all. Scott Farrington, oh, hi Dave, hope you're well. This will make you laugh. My daughter thinks you look like Nicolas Cage. Well, hello. <laughs> no, funnily enough, um, there's a few people I've been told I look like, uh, not so much now with no hair, but back in the day. So the guy who um, presents Grand Designs, if you've seen that, uh, I'm meant to look uh, a bit like him, I forget his name now. Uh, the guy from Arrested Development, um, I've never watched it, but apparently I look like him. Uh, somebody once said that when I was younger, I looked a little bit like an early Kevin Costner. Um, uh, Wesley Crusher, if you remember Star Trek The Next Generation, Wesley Crusher. When I was about 18, I did look like Wesley Crusher. Um, but um, uh, yeah, Nicolas Cage, that's a first for me at the moment, Nicolas Cage. But uh, yeah, I'll take that, I'll take that. Um, Georgina's there, she says hello. Oh, she says hey. Um, hey, Georgina. Um, David Burlett, bonjour, David. I uh, hope you are well over there. Uh, Nigel Quinn, afternoon, Dave and Bobo. Thank you for sorting the t-shirt. Yeah, no problem, Nigel. As I said, we have, we have one left. It was a large size, which is the equivalent to a medium, because uh, I'm usually a medium to a large, and I wear a small, uh, so that gives you an idea. So it should fit you nicely. Um, uh, yeah, that was bought for... Um, uh, I think it was bought for cash, uh, but it didn't fit uh, because it was too big for him. So yeah, uh, Ron says, uh, hi mate, when will you be getting levitation devices in? Thanks. So the levitation devices, they've been made, they're all ready to ship. They were ready to ship uh, early March, but all of them, um, that's why they're made in India. Okay, and all of India is on lockdown at the moment. And because they're on lockdown, they can't ship them. So uh, I've got a huge JOL order, levitation devices, some other bits and bods all sitting there waiting to be shipped and they can't do anything until the lockdown there is over. So I really don't know when they're gonna be in, but soon I hope because uh, uh, we have a lot of people wanting them. Uh, Brett Davies says, thank you for your help and advice uh, via email recently. Great help, you're always welcome, Brett, uh, anytime. Kenny says, hurrah, Prop Dog Friday. Again, magic. <laughs> Uh, that's the way I feel too. Uh, Chris says, uh, no transplant yet, Dave. Uh, so <laughs> here from dialysis as usual. Okay, that's good to know you're joining us. Yeah, if anyone's um, lost a limb or anything as well, you know, don't bother going to the hospital till after the show. It's not worth it. Yeah, just put it on ice. Um, Dave Bonnie's there. Hello, Dave. I hope all is well, my friend. He says, uh, good to see you as usual and to you. Uh, Stephen Lovering. Hello, Stephen. How are you? Uh, Eddie Grant says, uh, how's it hanging, Dave? Uh, good, thanks. Bit to the right. Um, Peter says, uh, hi, Dave. Great catch a live show for once. Thanks for my JOL products back Easter time uh, and my Morgan coins. They feel great when putting the practice in. Uh, you're most welcome, Peter. Thank you for purchasing. Uh, Prop Dog, uh, Jace is here commenting as Prop Dog. Um, so yeah, uh, if you see a little blue circle with uh, uh, the, uh, the Prop Dog logo, that is Jason. Um, uh, we got a little video from Jason uh, and Luke as well uh, a little later on. Uh, Shane McDermott says, uh, what's up? Uh, hi Dave, stay well. Uh, and to you, Shane. Uh, Freddie says, uh, hi Dave, it's Freddie. Big thanks to PropDog for the excellent service for my delivery. Arrived next day and I'm loving everything I ordered. You're doing an amazing job. Especially uh, sheer luck comedy book test. Uh, that's what we briefly talked about in the live last week. Uh, and the ring flight are amazing and suit me perfectly. Thank you, Freddie, for the, uh, the kind feedback. Uh, I wish everyone was like that. We're having, I'm having major problems with one guy in America at the moment who uh, placed an order uh in april uh, in america it's still not there and what does he do he, he this is um uh he purposely didn't choose tracked he, he purposely chose airmail with no tracking to run about the tracking and rather than saying uh, hey guys at prop dog uh where's my uh, where's my order any chance of an update nope he doesn't do that doesn't contact us by email doesn't contact us by uh, facebook what does he do he puts in a fraudulent claim with his credit card company saying we ripped them off and not shipped the order and taking his money <sighs> yeah, and so I'm going through a whole load of uh, hassle with the bank now and, and trying to sort things out. It's going to cost us a fortune. They are making us um, uh, refund him uh, no matter what. And I'll get the bank charges and almost guaranteed it's going to arrive in a few days. So uh, thank God not everyone is like that. Just uh, a small few 
uh, pain in the ass people out there. Uh, Finley says, thanks, uh, oh sorry, for the face masks, um, are you getting in the medium ones for pre-order? As it says, you can only order the pre-order ones in large. Hmm. I did originally only put the pre-order ones on large because we still had loads of medium at the time, but then the medium ones are gone. So double check now, Finley. You should be able to order the pre-order the, the medium ones now. If not, let me know and I'll quickly sort out while I'm on here. But uh, yeah, uh, as from about... Uh, Oh, about 11 o'clock this morning, I think I sorted all that out. So if you were checking yesterday, yes, you wouldn't be able to pre-order them. Uh, Jonah says, sure, Jansen's not trying to get out of the house. Uh, kids can be frustrating. <laughs> um, I don't have kids, so I don't know about that. Um, uh, morning, Andy Ray. I hope all is well in morning land. Um, Tingley, Andy Tingley says, um, book arrived today, Dave. Uh, wife hid it till birthday. I can't believe it. <laughs> um, oh, did you like that? <laughs> Occasionally Bobo does laugh back with us, don't you? Sometimes, and you won't. Um, Prop Dog, uh, or Jason, should I say, says, Thanks, Freddie, glad you like your order and it arrives so quick. Uh, Adrian Pritchard, greetings, sir, and to you. Uh, Max Gibson, hello, mate, I hope all is well. He says, uh, It's six cents by Hugo Shelley, worth the money. Uh, yes, it is, Max, yeah, and uh, we sold an awful lot of them, and if they wasn't, wasn't worth the money, it wouldn't um, sell loads of. So, yeah, absolutely worth the money. Uh, it is a little bit pricey, but, you know, it is, yeah, as I said, it's one of the best for doing what it does out there. Uh, Pete Meacham says, hi mate, ahoy ball as well, love the masks, uh, thank you Pete. Uh, yeah, I was hoping to have one here that I can be wearing during the live, but we'll have to wait till next week uh, if we don't sell out again. Uh, Matthew Colley says, good afternoon Dave, and to you. Uh, Rob Jane, uh, Rob, I've got a little something for you in a minute. You did ask for something and I will go on to that in a second, but he says, uh, hey Bobo, good to see you. And Dave, can you ask Dave to talk about his old routine with the math? Oh, well, yeah, there we go. Math calls in the bottle. Um, cheers, Dave. And thanks for the quick turnaround of the order received today. Great service. Uh, you're most welcome. And yes, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I can't do the exact one I used to do. I haven't got the stuff here. I don't do it anymore. There's a few things to it, but I will show you. Um, so I've got a little um, uh, math call here just ready for you. It's a kind of a semi-performance. You'll get the idea. I'm not going to do the full performance. Uh, I can talk through most of it, but I'll, I'll give you a quick short show now. I'm, usually I'll sneak the mouth coil in. Oh, by the way, if you're going to sneak a mouth coil in, um, what I'll usually do is, is as I'm turning around to get something like that, I'm not, uh, and then sneak it in that way. And to start off with, um, uh, I'll just grab a little bit of paper from somewhere. Um, in fact, I'm gonna use that and I'll do something like this. do something like that, okay? So, um, uh, let me talk a little bit about that very quickly for you. Did you like that? Did you like it? Okay, so um, if I'm gonna do a bottle or a champagne bottle, quite often I'll use two mouth cores, okay? I'll put one in, I'll take a load out, and as I'm taking it out, I'll put another one back in and continue so I'll get a lot more of a bunch. So, um, so that's a bunch as it is, and that's pretty good for hiding bottles, but ideally you want a bit more, so I'll usually use two when I'm doing it. Now, the other thing I'll do, I haven't got it here, it's something I made some time ago. It was basically a, a kind of a sock, okay? So I'm just gonna use a silk for now, and the idea would be, uh, whatever you're gonna produce, whether it be a, uh, a bottle, um, or, um, in fact, I'll tell you in a second, uh, once I've done this, what I used to, uh, to do. So there we are. You can do that, and that will sit nicely. Uh, ideally, you're gonna want a splash bottle gimmick or something, so uh, there's two ways of doing it. You're gonna have a jacket on, okay? Um, and what you'll want is either a splash bottle gimmick where that will be there, okay? And as you're pulling the gimmick out like that, you can kind of... What? I've got tight jeans on, but it might work. There we are. So the idea is, if my hand is... Uh, uh, well, that's not going to work. Let me loosen my belt a bit. Yeah, well, with a splash bottle, you can kind of put it around a bit and then get it back into view. But if I'm reaching over here, everything's fine. If I reach over that side, it opens up. 
okay? So as I'm pulling something out, it's the same principle for splash bottle as well. What I'll do is I'll move the bunch of um, mouth cords here, and as I'm pulling one bit out, I'll come across over here. And as I'm pulling it out over this way, like I did with Bobo, that is now exposing the bottle, okay? Um, it's not ideal to use this method. Uh, stick it into your trousers, so we'll just pull it away. So yeah, it will be hidden out of sight, kind of over here. I'll be producing a bit over there, put the mouth caller here, go across, produce over there, and then you've got the bottle out, and then come back through and afterwards pull it out. So yeah, I'd have this little tube, um, and onto that tube, I got some uh, silk. I cut, I cut up a whole load of strips of silk, and I sewed the strips to the actual um, um, uh, tube, if that makes sense. So you've got a white tube, white strips. It looks like a bunch of mouth cores. A silk isn't ideal. You can do it. It's not perfect. Um, the other method to do it is to, um, is to have a um, uh, David Penn's amazing uh, bottle production, which comes on the back. So that one allows it to sit up here uh, like that on the back, okay? And then you could do that bit without a jacket. So uh, that will be here, and you want it so that when you relax your hand to your side, okay, to here, you can just grab it, okay? So as you're pulling it out, you're kind of pulling it out of that, and you come back down here as you're pulling it out, and what you're doing, as you bring it to here, you're swinging it down like that, into the actual uh, mess you're making, and then you can produce it out. If you're doing that method, you don't really need to have uh, the sock on it, because once you're in the situation, you're coming out of that, you've stolen it, you can just kind of swing it back down and just keep it down here the whole time. It's not going to be up here in sight. All, all the attention is on what you're bringing out and just straight into it like that. So you can do that method. Uh, what I used to do uh, was a little goldfish bowl production. So I started off by doing the wine bottles, uh, but then I just found it too bulky to be carrying around. So I had this little, um, it was a, a kind of a mini... Uh, if you can imagine a bottle with a really wide base to it, but it had an opening about that big, uh, okay? And on there, um, you have a cork that goes in. Um, it wasn't something I made, it was an off-the-shelf product, and it had a little magnetic thing. And what happened, it just slotted down like that, okay? And it held it in place. And when you're pulling the mouth cores out, you come back down, you just pull the actual um, uh, thing off, and it all comes off in your hand. And then you come back up to here, and then you, uh, as you're pulling the... Um, paper away, you just taken the lid off. So the lid was all painted white um, and everything was white around it except for the goldfish bowl. So I was able to kind of, you know, produce all this mouth core, come back, I'll make a little joke about, oh, some bits coming out my backside, come back round, I've now got the goldfish bowl and then I just produce it afterwards, put it on the table. So um, yeah, I hope that helps a bit, Rob. Um, I said I haven't got everything to show you properly, but this will give you a good idea of how it all works. So right, on with the next one, Ian Smith. Ian says, afternoon Dave and Bobo, trying to persuade my other half to get a bird. Any chance of a, a Bobo trip to aid my arguments? Keep safe, guys. Okay, um, yeah, I will get a little something from Bobo. There's a couple of things she will do. Uh, bear with me two seconds, guys. Uh... <coughs> right, so, um, birds not like... Dogs, it's very hard to get a bird to do a trick just by asking. They've got to have some kind of reward to her. So, um, well done, Bobo. Um, let me just switch over. So what have you done there, Bobo? It's messed up my screen. Ah, you're done. There you go. Right, I'm going to go over to the iPhone Zoom and put Bobo on the floor. In fact, we'll show one trick here first of all. So, Bobo, what's this? Look, I've got something here. What's this? Can you see? Hang on, let me come a bit closer. So, yeah, come up here. What's this? Okay, so uh, high five, there you go, and spin, 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 there's a spin, good bird. And we're gonna go across to the iPhone camera, uh, and I'm gonna put this, uh, I'm gonna come around and put it on the floor, just bear with me guys, so come over here. That's it, that's it, bye There we go, off the stand. Where about? Where are you? What's this? What's this? Do you want this? Roll over. Yeah, good bird. And again, roll over. Roll over. Roll over. Roll over. Roll over. Away from the cables. Go on, roll over. Yeah, good bird. There we go. You can have a little munch on that.
there we go guys got butter fingers literally um right so yeah um bobo will do a few tricks but she usually wants some kind of reward and able to do it you want to come back up come on in. come here but they are very clever and they learn so many different words i mean she knows things like uh, in the car, in the cage, walkies come here, up. Um, there's tons of commands that she knows that she just picks up. I make sure I say regular commands and she picks up on it. And uh, yeah, very clever, aren't you, bird? So it takes about 24 hours to 48 hours to teach her a new trick. I don't teach her many. That's pretty much all she does. Uh, well worth it, but they do require a lot of uh, attention. You can't just buy a bird and leave it at home all day alone when you're at work. It'll drive them mad. They are very, very social animals. So, uh, uh, James says, um, ETA for the uh, levitation device. We just discussed that, James. Uh, could be some time, unfortunately. Um, we're just waiting for India to come off lockdown. Uh, Brian says, uh, and now you look like you could host Crystal Maze. <laughs> Hello from Central Florida, says, says Mark. Uh, Tim Shady, can't believe it's Friday again. I can't believe it as well. Um, I swear, I literally turn the computer off and turn it on again, and it's Friday. Um, uh, hello Frank from Florida, I hope all is well. Uh, Simon Taylor, hi Dave, hope you're well and not going stir crazy in that shop. Uh, not anymore, as I said, Mila's is back in this week for the first time and it's just made things so, so much easier now. Um, Andy says, uh, I thought you looked like a, a Valley, uh the ex-Chelsea player. Uh, I don't know who that is, I'm not really a football man, so uh, I don't know who that is. Uh, Derek West says, uh, hi mate, I hope you're all well. Uh, Charlie Robinson, I think you kind of look like Walter White. <laughs> that has come up a few times since the whole ball thing's gone on. Uh, yeah, and some of the, thing I, the things I, uh, I uh, cook downstairs in the workshop. Um, Jeffrey says, uh, hi Dave, hang in there. Um, thank you, Jeffrey. Uh, Lee says, uh, hey buddy, always nice to see you on Friday. Uh, Max says, I think Dave might be the only person I know that says bits and bods rather than bits and bobs. Uh, bits and bods, yeah, I don't know. I've always said bits and bods. Yeah, uh, who knows? Um, probably something I picked up as a child. Uh, Jack Johnson says, uh, have we got a book on this week? Yes, we have, Jack. We are reviewing um, Distilled. So, uh, yeah, it'll be on very shortly. Jonas says, uh, everyone looks like someone else. Me and myself look like Hercule Poirot. Um, if he was fat, Asian and still and crazy. Uh, other than me, I look like that guy in their nightmares. Uh, Simon Cartwright, gratefully received your lecture DVD last week. Ring flight uh, on my shopping list soon. Uh, thank you, Simon, you're most welcome. Um, Adam says, uh, hi, Dave and Bobo. Hope you're doing a great job. Or oh, you're doing a great job. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, Gerald says, uh, nice to see you, Dave. Um, you were right about Sands Mines last week. They didn't shut down, but instead they just changed their name. A lot pissed off with a newly released uh godly vanish especially uh, nicholas lawrence uh, okay yeah sans minds they're just scamming and conning everybody non-stop yeah never trust them uh prop dog uh or oh, jason says uh, you can now pre-order the mask in both medium and large thank you for sorting that out jason stan hello mate hope all as well this is um fancy effort dave uh, uh much appreciated buddy uh thank you uh stan uh george uh gracious says afternoon dave uh, ad says hello Dave, I'm in Los Angeles and ordered some bits on the 20th of April. It arrived on the 13th of May. Great service. Uh, thank you. You're most welcome. That's actually not bad. Three weeks to uh, LA is pretty good. It's state by state. Some states take a lot longer uh, than other states. Um, uh, Nevada is taking currently about five to six weeks. Florida is about four weeks. New York, New York, hello. Uh, New York is about four or five weeks. So yeah, it goes state to state. Um, they're obviously on the ball there in LA. Uh, I think it's all to do with the different lockdowns in different states as well. Uh, Davis West says, uh, Nicholas Lawrence, angry. Uh, where on earth did you get that impression? Uh, George Grayson, thanks for the Bonzalope stage. You're most welcome, George. Uh, Peter says, uh, can you do the sneaky mouth call load again? Uh, yeah, the, the mouth call load, um, uh, literally, uh, uh, if I'm coming to the table, because I, I don't want to arrive to the table with it in my mouth because I've got a chat. So at some point, I say, I'll say, oh, let me show you something else. I've got something. Uh, 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 oh. Hmm. And then I'll go out the it. Something like that. You, you'll think of something. Um, uh, or you can just say, uh, oh, <laughs> drop my deck of cards one second. Yeah. Um, Graham Webber says, bravo. Uh, Gerald says, uh, hey, Dave, um, uh, where ands, where ands, where and what kind of elastic band do we use to make the gimmick for cigarette uh, pen through card? Thank you. Um, through card. Uh, I'm trying to think what you mean by that, Gerald, because uh, you have a band with a coin, a cigarette through coin, 
but cigarette through card is like a sharpie through card it's not really an elastic band it's usually dental dam uh, but some have been made with elastic thread so i'm really not sure best thing to do gerald is drop us an email with the actual product you want to repair or sort out and i can look at it and see if i can work out what you need for it uh, George says, Dave, the bifold holders were so uh, good, I got a second one. Uh, good, glad you like it. Danny Wise is there. Have you got the Wise wallets in? Uh, Danny, I've just done a Murphy's order about 10 minutes ago and they didn't have any in, so I can't order them if I don't have them in. So, yeah, nothing I can do, mate. Um, Andy Tinkley says, my mate wanted to do the David Blaine trip where we bring up a frog from his stomach. I tried, but uh, I'm afraid he croaked it. Laugh out loud. Stop it, Andy. <laughs> John Archer's there. Hello, mate. I hope all is well. He goes, that Paris, par parrot is less than two miles away. Uh, two miles away or two metres away? Um, not sure what you mean there, uh, uh, John. Uh, George says, uh, my levitation device broke. Any ideas on how to fix it? Uh, yeah, George, if by broke you mean the little nipple that comes off it, uh, yeah, a few of them have been returned uh, broken. Uh, funnily enough, um, Peter Burkett uh, mentioned that uh, on a phone call earlier on today. Um, I contacted the people who supply them and they said, oh, it sometimes happens. I'm like, oh, well, that's bloody great. You know, thanks for letting us know. So we are now including... Um, two extra ones whenever you buy a levitation device. So drop us an email with the details on and just just explain again on the email. And then Monday morning, I'll send you out two brand new um, little devices. Uh, it's stuck in there with a heat glue. So all you need to do is pull the old one out, heat up either the glue in the bottom or heat up the actual device, hold it with a pair of pliers or tweezers, and then put it back in, let it cool, and it will glue it nicely in place for you. Um, oh, yo for Bobo, says Otto. Uh, Otto, I like that, Bobo. Um, Alan loves the Bobo tricks. Uh, yeah, basically, the, but I, I don't really teach the tricks because he's not a performing parrot, but a few people um, have said, um, uh, you know, how fast can she learn? And I said 24 hours, and they've laid down a challenge, and, and that's the three tricks she's learned in 24 hours. So, uh, yeah, she is that super clever. Aren't you, Bird? Um, uh, Lee Alex, looking forward to the poker face mask. Yep, uh, all reserved for you, Lee. So, um, uh, well, you pre-ordered, haven't you now? So, uh, yeah, we'll get that out to you as soon as it comes in. Uh, Steve Lawrence says, hi, Dave. Thanks for the prompt delivery. Order Saturday, delivered Wednesday. Cheers. The post is getting better. Um, I look like Penfold from Danger Mouse. It's <laughs> Chris Callender's. Uh, Good old danger mouse. Um, Hans says, uh, hello, Dave and Bobo. Hope everything's fine. Yeah, all good here. Thank you, Hans. Hope all is well with you too. Paul says, uh, Dave, I need some silly Zoom worthy tricks to top my boredom, please. Uh, right, best thing to do, Paul, if you look on the main homepage of our website, we have a category, category called Silver Screen Magic. Now we get asked all the time, can you recommend something that's good on camera or good for social media? So we made that category specifically for that. So if something comes in and it's super visual and good for camera, we'll put it in that category. So anything to go for in there should be what you're looking for. Uh, Craig says, hi Dave, I hope you're keeping well and busy in the lockdown. I am keeping extremely busy, Craig, and I'm very well. Hope you are too, mate. Uh, Jeffrey says, uh, Dave, you look like uh, a baddie from a pantomime. Who is this? What was that? Disastrily, um, is it disastrily? What's the name from, um, you know, Catch the Beard, you know what I mean. Uh, Dick, Dis Dick, Dick, Dick Dastardly or something like that, yeah. Um, Andy Tingley says, uh, do you sell dental dam? Yes, we do. Have a look on the website. Um, greetings from Denmark, says Brian, and greetings from uh, well, uh, Hounslow, uh, West London. Yeah, everyone knows I don't like saying Hounslow. Uh, Dean's there. He says, hello. Hello, Dean. I hope all is well. David Burgess, how much are your custom close-up mats? Uh, that depends on uh, what you want. Uh, by, by custom, that implies any size, any shape. So um, it depends whether you want one this big, this big, this big, this big, that big. Uh, we've got one behind the shelf there that's like three tables long that we take to Blackpool every year. So uh, prices really depend on the size you want, the fabric you want, whether you want custom printing on it, uh, whether you want one layer, two layers, extra wadding. We can do anything you want, Sir David. So uh, best thing to do is drop us an email, tell us the kind of thing you're looking at, and we'll get back to you with a quote. Um, George Grayson says, thanks, Dave. I'll drop you an email later. Uh, my pleasure, mate. Charlie says, uh, oh, yeah, Charlie's put the link up there for dental dam. Cheers, like Charlie. Uh, I like the uh, the trick with dental dam where you have a glass and you put the coin, or you have the coin on the glass and you push it through the dental dam if you know that coin, uh, that trick. Uh, very simple to do. Real easy beginner trick, but yeah, really, really, really good. The best trick I know of with dental dam. Uh, the only trick I know of with dental dam. Um, uh, who are we on? Uh, Brian says, best trick out uh, now for cabaret show. What is your opinion, Dave, for cabaret out now? Ah... Uh, I mean, I still really like the, 
Thank you, Bobo. Uh, I still really like tic-tac-toe. I think that's a great one to do. Um, best drink. Drink in the news. I love drinking the news for cabaret. Um, there's a few out, but I, I would say the best one probably we have at the moment is um, free, uh, free Card Joe. Uh, Joe Monty's Free Card Joe. I would say that's probably one of the strongest ones that's hot at the moment. Highly tested, it's got loads of TV time uh, and it's, it's completely proven and uh, yeah, uh, it comes in a large and a small, but those are, are ones I highly recommend. Um, hope that helps a bit. Uh, other people I'm sure can mention a, a ton of things. I mean, there are tons of things out there. It's just, I mean, what's best for me is not always going to be best for you. So, uh, right. Uh, George says, can't wait to come down to the shop after lockdown. Uh, I can't wait to have people back in the shop after lockdown. Uh, Peter Burkett, same here, Dave, uh, for the levitation devices. Yeah, we sorted you out, Peter. It's already in the post. Should be with you in a few days. Uh, Preston, hello, mate. I hope all is well. He says, hi, Dave. Um, I hope you're well. Uh, how's the Verne Sharpie thumb writer? Is there a better mark option you have? Uh, right, no, there isn't. Uh, in fact, we saw the last one of those today. We've got more coming in on Monday. Um, so with the, the Verne one, it does a job. It is pretty much a Sharpie nib, so it looks like it, but it's bloody expensive for what you're getting. Most people just use the Verne grease with a black leg grease because, to be honest, once it's on a pen and you show it to somebody, no one says, oh, is that a Sharpie or is that a black crayon? Because they look almost identical. Unless you're looking really close, you're not really going to notice. So save your money, Preston. Get yourself a black grease version and go with it on that. So um, you're always welcome to pop over to the shop after lockdown and uh, try a few on and have a look at them as well. Um, Mine happened this morning, says George. I'm uh, not sure what that is. Uh, Shattered is great for cabaret. Yes, Shattered's another great one. There are so many out there, Otto. You've got the um, uh, Shoe Business, Shoe Business by Scott Alexandra. That's brilliant as well. Uh, there's a, a ton of ton of really good effects. You've got, um, oh, what's the Angelo Carbone's one. Um, forget the name of it. Search for Angelo Carbone. It's the, the ones with the, uh, the, the, the cards that you keep showing. I forget the name of it now. Uh, but just to search it, for it, search it on the internet, uh, sorry, on the uh, the Dog website. Uh, Jonas says, is it possible for you to make a custom close-up pad with black art pockets for coins and cards? Not really, Jonas. I mean, we can make one, but the problem is it's, there's so much research and development that would have to go into that. And it would really be dependent on the kind of light conditions you're going to use because black art in one environment isn't necessarily going to be good in another environment. That's why black art is always best on stage where you take your own lighting requirements with you and have them set very specifically. Um, so yeah, it's, it's one of those things, I could make one that worked perfectly here in our lighting conditions, you, you get it to you and it could just not work totally at all. So uh, yeah, I would rather not make any black art, uh, something you'd you'd need to work out really closely with somebody making it in front of you with, with all the right conditions. Um, mine last night, weird, said Peter Burkett, um, yeah. Uh, that time of year, I don't know. Um, Preston, amazing, thanks, you're most welcome. Right, okay, so uh, let's go over to uh, Alex's book corner first of all. So uh, Alex has got a new review for us and um, uh, yeah, uh, Alex is uh, rather um, enthusiastic about this, I think. Well, enthusi enthusiastic about doing the review, here we go. Hello, Prop Doggers! It's Friday Prop Dog Live, and it's Alex's Book Corner! Woo! Okay, um, so I've been in isolation, I've been down in Trowbridge, but guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? The post still works! Um, special next day delivery, and Dave sent me a book. Um, it's a book I saw, it's a book I was excited about, so is it any good? I don't know, because you know what? This coronavirus has really been a bit of a knockout punch, really, for the world of magic and, and working magicians. So I'm really hoping that this might be the thing, your corner man, to get you back up off the canvas, out for the next round, and really punching. And the book is Distilled by Ryan Plunkett. Now, um, I don't know if any of you have heard of Ryan Plunkett. He's had a couple of books out before. Um, a current one is A New Angle, um, all about what to do with a stripper deck. Um, and how to use the stripper deck really effectively. A surprisingly good book. And, I, and if more people read it, more people would be using the stripper deck. Um, believe me. And also, um, he had a book out called Some Assembly Required. Um, that I do have, but not with me here. Um, and a few of the tricks have been carried over into this book. Um, but I don't think, I think it's currently out of print, um, that one. Um, but that was his first book. Um, 
And if you don't know anything about him personally, he is a magician. Um, I think it's Chicago he works in. Um, he works every night. He's got regular gigs. And he really preaches getting a trip that you love, you might like it, and going out and performing it and performing it and performing it. He thinks any way you can really get better at magic and improve the trick is to actually perform it and listen to the reactions, think about how you can make them stronger, and then you end up with a really, really powerful trick, possibly one that no one else is using because you've worked it more than anyone else because you love it. And that, that's what he kind of preaches. And the fact that he's carried two over from previous books into this book means he really does do what he says, because otherwise he'd have lots and lots of tricks. But what you get in here are really well-crafted masterpieces of close-up magic. Now, they're not all suitable for walk-around, or certainly not in the format in this book, as he does them. So he often does um, a more formal close-up show, um, again, every night, so he really does work it, but he's usually got a couple of people with him and a, and a table, you know, deliberately, and, and a small crowd, so almost like a parlour sort of situation. But I think you can actually rework them to be um, walk around, and certainly if you've got that, if you've got friends over, so if you're doing it for friends at a dinner party or something like that, they're perfect for that. And also sometimes, you know, at the end of a wedding or at the end of a gig, it's a bit of a lull, isn't it? People stop dancing and everything else, and they're just sitting down, they're at the table, they're relaxing. So if you've got those moments where you can spend a little bit more time with people, and you've got the table, then these are the tricks that you could be doing. There is some assembly required in a few of them. Um, he does put a bit of work into the deck quite often, or into certain cards, to help out. So he really does have fail-safes in here, which I'm a big fan of. Um, I know Alan Ackerman, who um, I'm a bit of a fan of when it comes to card magic, he always has a little check, so part way through the trick he knows that he's cut to the right card, for example, and he's on the right lines. So Ryan does that, and um, there are ten in the book. The book is absolutely beautiful, as we're expecting. I think we're really being treated um, to some brilliant books at the moment. I mean, really well made, uh, and, and it's a nice size. Um, I was surprised at its size, actually. I thought it was going to be a, a bit bigger, but it's really easy to hold and read and carry around. It's not too heavy. Um, again, if you, it's the sort of incredible quality we've come to accept now from, from magic books. But really, it's a huge step up if you if you think about how they used to be uh, hand drawn. And I know those illustrations were very good, but uh, uh, you know there's nothing better than a nice glossy colour photograph sometimes. So you get ten tricks in it, um, and I'll just run them through these. Nice little forward. Um, and each trick, he actually does talk about how it's developed over the time. So where he started, what his starting points. Nice crediting and how he's adjusted it to suit him, which is something obviously we should all do, but sometimes we find the trick's too difficult for us, and we may just give up rather than think, well, is there another way I could be doing it? Can I, can I substitute a different slide? Can I cheat a bit, even? I wouldn't like to call it cheating, but, you know, so he often uses um, a breather crimp, for example, um, which is, I'm a big fan of the breather crimp, I use it quite a lot, because, um, you know, I, I lost a finger break once and I wasn't very happy with myself, so um, I quite often use a breather crimp now. Um, so he's a big fan of that and, and other bits of work. But um, I'll just talk about the tricks. There are ten tricks in it. Um, one coin trick, and it's a nice coin trick. Um, it is called, if I can think about it, uh, Magnetic Silver. So I don't know if you've seen Magnetic Coins by Shu Ogawa. I wasn't familiar with it, but it's quite a nice effect of coins either being um, attracted to each other or repelling each other. So it's quite a nice different plot, different, different sort of transpositions and colour changes uh, that a lot of coin magic is. Um, and, and to be honest, I can get a, bit, I get a bit tired of coins disappearing all the time and reappearing. So it's, an, it's nice to have a new plot, and it's one I wasn't familiar with. It sounds really good and not too difficult. Uh, but the first trick is any card at, any card at our numbers. Um, great little trick. Uh, requires a couple of decks. Um, so again, this is one probably more for formal, um, or, or when you've got more time. So, so your friends round, perfect. And, and he does a really good thing. He's very familiar with the techniques and how you can play with people's memories. So this isn't what he does, but I, I mean, I used to miss call quite a lot. And people can't backtrack from a miss call. So they're never going to suss out the method. They're always going to be amazed because they believe that you were holding that card. So and you weren't because it would be impossible. But that's really clever. Um, so he uses a similar sort of technique in that um, with card at any number, which is very, very clever. Um, fan mail is a take on David Regal's very last card. 
if you want to see what that looks like for stage, he did it on Pen and Teller Fool Us. I performed David Regal's very last card um, at a stage show that I used to do every month, and it went down really, really well. And Brian's converted it into a close-up trick. Um, his method wouldn't be good for walk around, but you could alter it. You could alter it. I think there would be other ways of doing it. Once you know how it's done, you've just got a bit of sneaky stuff, and you can play with that and have it about your body rather than how he does it in the book. I think uh, Ace on top, a really really good walk around packet trick. Definitely recommended. Not too diff not too difficult because you've only got five cards. It's one of the the great things. People get put off by packet tricks because. I don't know if it's not a card in play, or, or they think people might... And the cards are normal anyway, so you can handle that afterwards. And a packet tricks make, make, you know, because there's only five cards, the handling's not as difficult as you'd imagine. Magnetic Seal, as I've mentioned. Uh, time Machine is... Um, I can't remember Time Machine. Um, out of Sight, Out of Mind is a version of Die Vernon's trick. Um, I forget, I forget which... Uh, uh, Inner Secrets, or one of those. I forget which book it's in. Um, very very popular actually. Um, I've seen it perform quite a lot. It's not that easy. It can be a bit tricky. Um, and so Ryan, using this is one of those where he cheats by putting a bit of work into certain cards so that uh, it becomes easier and less complicated and more fail and fail safe. So it's quite nice. Um, versatile transpo. That is a trick with dollar bills, and I'm not sure you can use English currency with it. Um, I've read it, I haven't got enough currency, it would be very expensive to put together as well, so I'm not sure that one's going to be much use to the UK market, uh, but again, it's a nice idea. Uh, paper and silk, that's card through handkerchief, I love card through handkerchief, I don't see it enough, um, and I've stopped performing it now, but until it's performed on you, you can't, you can't really remember, it, it looks really magical, it's one of those card tricks that look, that's got a penetration, it's, which is quite rare, it's really good, it's really good. Um, so his version is really neat, but you do need a special deck for it. Now, I'm not sure that's a special deck that Prop Dog could make for you, I don't know. But it does actually, I mean, that social deck could be really useful for other things as well. So you can control the card even though someone else has shuffled it. So they have the card returned, it gets shuffled, and you still be able to locate the card, which is quite a nifty thinking on that. Um, uh, muck Off is mucking all the cards around the table, nice shuffle, very nice trick. And Gravity Deck is brilliant. Um, that is one of the tricks that was in Some Assembly Required. I did put it together um, ages ago. I performed it only a couple of times and then I left it uh, somewhere and lost it and put it back together again. You can get what you need for that. You can get a few things from eBay for about a fiver. Um, and cut, you don't actually need to do that from, from five, you can just use any old card boxes actually. But it's a way of making a, a deck appear or disappear from a box of cards, if that makes sense. Um, so you have a pack of cards, you can show that they're empty, a box of cards, show that it's empty, and it weighs empty, and then you can show it full, and it weighs full. Um, really clever, um, and a brilliant use of a gimmick everyone's probably got, and one that you thought there was only one use for. So really good, interesting thinking. It's a lovely book. I've really, really enjoyed it. And I am certainly going to think about using some of ones possibly for my stage show. I might use them a bit bigger. And I'm definitely going to do, I'm definitely going to try and make the um, cloth, the card from handkerchief one. And I'm going to put Gravity Deck again together. Um, but it's really, really good. So there you go. It is a lovely book. It is really solid. It is only 40 pounds and you get 10 tricks. Forty pounds. I'd say two. You probably uh, the bills. You're probably not going to do, um, and I'm not sure about being able to get the the, the special deck um, yet. So that's only eight. So five pounds each for some tricks that will really blow people away. Really well constructed. Nice thinking, and just some of his thoughts about how he started, where he got the inspiration from, and how he arrived at where he is. And he's, you know, he admits to cheating sometimes. He admits to making life a bit easier for himself. Um, so if you're prepared to you, not use a borrowed deck, got your own deck of cards, get distilled. It's, it's a very enjoyable book and um, it's a bargain at £40, to be honest. So that's it from me. I'm very happy um, because I've got a new book to play with and um, I shall see you all very, very soon. Um, hopefully I shall be back in the shop soon. Now I can all go back. And um, yes, take care. God bless. Back to Dave. 
Thank you, Alex. So, uh, yeah, as I said, uh, very enthusiastic with his um, uh, opening lines there. Um, uh, yeah, quite funny. But yeah, that was um, uh, Distilled by Ryan Plunkett. Brilliant book, apparently. So we'll have to try and find some, uh, some not very good books to give to Alex to review so that he doesn't give good reviews all the time. But there again, if it was bad, we probably wouldn't be getting it. We'll figure something out. Uh, right, OK. Um, Michael Brimmer, talking of books, says um, uh, there was a book called 25 Rubber Penetration Tricks by Magic Ian, if you want some effects with dental dam. Oh, wow, that's brilliant. Uh, thank you, Michael, for that. That's very interesting. Um, yeah, we might have to see if we can get that in. Uh, Alan says, I tried to buy the Tony Clark DVD you recommended last week, but it was sold out. Can you order any more at some stage? Right, while Alex was doing the book review, I just went on to have a look, and they've been discontinued. It looks like I had the last, well, probably last ever one. Um, so, unfortunately, we can't get them in from Murphy's. I will try and find some other suppliers or even go direct to Tony um, in uh, Vegas direct and see if I can get them from him because it's something I do want to stock and I do want to have a copy for myself actually. Um, uh, I don't actually have a physical copy, I watched the one that was in the shop. Uh, but yeah, it is a brilliant, brilliant DVD and if we do get it back in, uh, keep an eye on it. I won't take it off the website just yet, Alan. Um, so anyone who wants it, hit notify when available and if we do get it back in, you'll get the email. Um, Cue the Magic was the, uh, the effect I was looking for, I was thinking of that was... Um, um, by Angelo Carbone, so thank you for that, Jason. Uh, Adrian says, The Gift by Angelo. No, it wasn't, no. Uh, and it's, uh, yeah, it's Angelo, not Anthony Carbone. Uh, it'll kill you if you heard you say Ange Anthony. <laughs> um, Jonas says, uh, Mike, Dana Mike Dantas? Dantas or Donatas? Uh, float and Ball is great for cabaret magic. Yeah, but we don't do that. We don't sell that. Um, ooh, cool introduction, says George. <laughs> um, uh, Otto says, Has Alex taken lessons in large ham acting from me? <laughs> Hello, prop lovers! Did that scare you? Um, uh, actually, Alex, if you're watching, Bobo was watching your review, absolutely fascinated. She was perched on the end here. She could hear your voice and see you, and she's kind of looking down there and watching your review for the first 10 minutes quite intently. Um, Preston says, uh, also, are you getting black gun metal cases back in stock? Thanks, mate. Uh, right, we had a real problem with those, Preston. We managed to get them at first. Uh, then all the suppliers I found ran out of it, so I went direct to the manufacturers, opened up a wholesale account to get it from them. Um, uh, I would get them shipped in, and it turns out that they discontinued them uh, shortly after I, I opened the account, so I didn't manage to get any anyway, so I don't think I'll ever get them back on. If you do want them, though, you might find a few shops still selling them, so hardware shops will stock them because they're originally tool cases. So you want to search for Draper, D-R-A-P-E-R, -E Draper, um, gun metal um, tool case uh, and you should come up with that uh, you might still find a few places uh, it'll be the same price we were selling them at uh, about £40 uh, Q the Maddox says Mark Paul yeah thanks for that Mark uh, we sorted that out um, Gotta love Alice's book corner says George uh, gotta love it uh, Otto says one doesn't necessarily neg uh, negate the other in that case uh, Peter Burke, appreciate the levitation parts, David. You're most welcome. Dr uh, George Grayson, same here. Thanks, Dave. Uh, Gary Scythebottom. Hi, Dave. Looking for crochet balls for chop cup. Two ungimmicked, one gimmicked, and one large, all in the same colour. Um, can't seem to find this base on stock at the moment. Just wondered if I'm on the uh, if I'm right, or do if you do currently have this in right. Not if you want the large as well. Now, the, first of all, the main problem you're going to get is you need to know whether you want a magnetic ball or a metallic ball. Okay, I've said it a few times on the lives. If the cup you have has a magnet in the base, then you're going to want a metallic ball to stick to it. If the cup you have has a metallic shim, then you're going to want a magnetic ball. If you have a metallic shim and put a magnet, uh, metallic ball in it, it's not going to stick. Or if you get a uh, magnetic cup with a magnetic ball, it's going to stick so hard you'll be wanging down the uh, on the uh, the count is so hard, you'll, you'll break your, your, your table just trying to get the ball out. So that's the main thing. Now, when it comes to crochet balls, there was, uh, who was it who did it? Morrissey. Morrissey did some really large blue crochet balls. I think we still have one or two in, uh, but they did them in red, blue, and a few other colours, but they, they were discontinued about three or four years ago. So we might have the old one in, but yeah, I don't know anyone who's got them uh, in such a way. The only thing I can suggest is baseballs, because... You get the mini baseballs, and then you get the big baseball final loads. Uh, I think you can also get knots now. Do you know the, 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 the string or the cord that's 
wound in a certain way to make like a knot ball you might be able to get jumbo ones of those so yeah it's difficult uh, other than that you're gonna have to find somebody to make them for you uh, i know sharon over at five of hearts magic she custom makes crochet balls so maybe give uh, give her a shout see if she can make one um so just go to fiveofheartsmagic.com you'll find the contact details there and give them a try and, and maybe she can help you out uh, but let her know first whether you want a metallic ball or a magnetic ball uh jack says uh can i join live please uh, how do you mean jack you're on you're here you've joined uh no need to ask you're, you're always here adrian says i received as he wins his repertoire book this week uh, it's beautiful and full of brilliant magic a lot of things you may have seen david blaine do so uh uh, sorry, do are by Azzy Wind, um, and in the book, uh, it's not cheap but worth every penny, in my opinion. Uh, thank you for that, Adrian. I'll see if we can get that in. Uh, Jack says, uh, to ask some questions, feel free to ask, Jack. Um, you just, just ask away, there's no pecking order, no permissions needed. Um, uh, I'd like to show you one of my tricks. Uh, oh, uh, anyway, you won't be able to show me one of the tricks on the live, but uh, feel free to actually. Uh, oh, I see what you mean. You want to join the live show. Uh, we can't get anyone in uh, uh, live via Facebook. You'd have to do it via Skype. So I uh, wouldn't be able to do that during this uh, live, Jack. But the other thing you can do is send us a video and we'll put it onto the live next week if you want to do it that way. Um, Hey, let Jack join. Uh, you can't. There's no facility on here to get somebody to join via a Facebook uh, a video on there. So uh, so we can't do it like that, unfortunately. Um, George, is, uh, can Jack join, please? Yeah, you can't. There's no way, guys. Um, um, yeah, lots of questions. Yeah, there's no way, unless you're going to Skype call us, um, which we've got to set up some stuff beforehand in order to do that. There's just no way of joining in on it, I'm afraid. Uh, or at least there's not I know of. if anyone knows how to do it on ecam uh, and there is a way of doing it then then by all means let me know but I've not seen a way of doing that as yet um, Andy says I use dental down for flap cards uh, it says for flap cards taker taker than sewing elastic taker I think, I think you mean better than sewing elastic. Uh, Andy, sorry. Uh, oh, yeah, sealer refills. Uh, they arrived this morning. Yeah. Oh, by the way, yeah, Wonder Sealer, by the way. A few people have been asking about it recently. So Wonder Sealer is finally back in, along with the Wonder Sealer refills. They are all back in stock. Uh, another thing I got in stock recently as well, I was going to show you guys. So um, as you know, D-Lights changed over to Prisma Lights. Uh, just a kind of rebranding and a few uh, improvements on it. And now they have a new one that is the Prisma Light Sound. Okay, so it says sound on it. So I didn't order a loading because I thought it might be a bit weird, maybe a bit crap basically. So I thought I'd get one in and have a look. And yeah, I'm not really a fan to be honest. I'm going to show you what they uh, they look like. So uh, so that's what it is. Don't know how they do. I'll put it by the microphone so you can hear it. Yeah. So you get different sounds. You get this is like a maybe an electronic buzz. You've got to be really careful though because if you press too high up, you hear that? Normal, like that. So you press in the wrong spot, you get a really dull sound, it's really awful, and it's not a very good light either. You don't like that, do you? <laughs> you having fun with that? Oh, it's good for Bobo anyway. So yeah, those are the, the, the Prisma D lights. If anyone does specifically want one, let me know, we'll order them in for you, but I don't think I'll be stocking them uh, as such. So uh, back on there. Uh, right. Yeah, uh, Jonas did say Mike Donato's uh, floating ball. Yeah, Mike Donato um, runs a shop called Magic. Uh, uh, sorry, the Mike Donato's Magic Studio in Bournemouth. If anyone wants to uh, to know about that, uh, right? Otto says, any news on the blank fill plus decks? A while ago, you said they were hard to get hold of. Yeah, I've been checking every week. Otto, they're still not available. Um, usually. Murphy stock. Well, we we I'm a good friend with Trevor Duffy, so whenever I see him at Blackpool, he always brings me a load of stuff, and I buy stuff from him afterwards uh, after the convention, uh, and that keeps us going for a while. And then other stuff we top up for Murphy's if we do need it. Uh, but Murphy's have been out for a while, um, and um, South Africa is really strict on lockdown at the moment. They won't be able to ship anything out of um, South Africa at the moment, uh, which is where Trevor is based. So unfortunately, we won't be able to get any for a while. Uh, we do still have the blank fill decks with the booklet though i think if you look on the website we've got some with a booklet which is pretty much the same you're just paying a little extra for the booklet with some more instructions in it so uh, there we go rings and things in the us are the best for crochet balls tried wholesale from them and we're waiting to hear says jason so that's good um jonas says tim star makes crochet balls yeah another good recommendation thank you jonas um dave please say uh hey jackie uh hey jackie hello <laughs> uh 
Um, I don't know who you are, but hello anyway. Uh, Nigel says, uh, have you been checking out the new range of products from TCC? <coughs> Top cups, you bags, pads, rings, etc. No, I haven't, Nigel. Uh, but um, Jason, uh, write that down at home, mate, and look into it for me. Uh, Andy says, uh, could we not do Zoom one day and chat all about magic? Um, maybe, I don't know. Again, it's finding the time to look into it all and getting it all sorted out. But uh, possibly, possibly not, I don't know. Uh, Preston says, uh, Andy Nyman here. Uh, oh, hello, Andy. Hope all is well, mate. Just wanted to check you have enough stock for the evil for everybody in lockdown to buy one. Andy, I think we still got about 2,000 copies, mate. So, yeah, we got enough. Boxes and boxes all over my house, trust me. Um, Andy Tigley says, uh, oh, he's saying hi to Andy. Uh, right, okay, so we caught up with that. We're going to talk very briefly now about the Amaze Wand. So these have just come in, the Amaze Wand. Um, and who better to talk about this than Jason? So uh, Jason's been at home um, with his uh, his youngest. Uh, not youngest now, is it? It was your youngest. You're, you're oldest now, yeah. Um, and uh, we're going to do a quick demo by Jason. And then Jason and Luke, who used to work in, still works here part-time, uh, is going to give you their opinions on it. So are you ready, guys? Over to uh, Jason's, uh, we're going to do the, the demo first and there's a separate video for the talk about it. Here we go. Right, tell them your name. I'm Thomas. Shut up. You what? I can't hear you. Charlie. Charlie. Everybody, this is Charlie. This is my eldest and my most uh, experienced volunteer in the house. Uh, you join us from our car mat and uh, the mess. Yeah, he's having two children under three. So uh, this is a magic wand, Charlie. What colour is this magic wand? Red. Excellent. Can you hold on to that for me a second? Brilliant. Now we're going to do some magic with the... What did you... How did you... How did you do that? I pulled it. Well, I know how you did it. Right. Don't do that. Right, hold on to the yellow one, please. But they can go as far as that. That... What colour is this one? Blue. Right, give me the yellow one, Charlie, you silly sausage. Right, hold on to the blue one for me. Now make sure it's really important. This the <laughs> not funny. Put the blue one and throw it. <laughs> your wally face. Right, hold on to this one for me. What colour is this one? Green. Excellent. Hold on to the green one and show everybody at home the big green magic. Oh, finally, we've got a magic one that's normal, that's that can form. What colour is this? Now we can do our magic with our normal black and white magic one. Hold on to that for me, please. Hold it in the middle. Excellente. Now remember, Charlie, what we get. What have you done? It looks like a cat's walked through some paint. It looks like a cat's walked through some paint. Thank you. Giving away my lines and everything. Okay. So this is the breakaway wand in Nest of Nest of Wands by Amaze Kids. And uh, for the price it is, it's very good, I think. What do you think? Do you like it? Do you like it? Yeah, again. Well, that's the fifth time. Again. Oh, oh don't! Stop it! Get him, Charlie! No, Get him! All right, cut! Cut! Again! Ow! Again! That hurts! Stop it! Stop <laughs> it! Oh, uh, there we go. So uh, that is the uh, the uh, demo uh, of uh, Amaze Wands uh, being performed by uh, uh, by Jason and his younger, uh, his, his oldest. Um, so uh, let's uh, go over to Jason and Luke and uh, let them discuss it a bit. Guys, welcome to Prop Dog Home Edition with me, Jason, and me, Luke. Hello. We are going to talk briefly about uh, the Amaze Wands, which is a new... Uh, children's entertaining prop from Amaze Kids, I believe, and Danny Orleans. Now, Lukey, we have both used nesting ones in our time as kids entertainers. Big fan. Um, this is actually your set, isn't it? This is my set, yeah. So, this is Luke's set that is... How much did you buy for, buy this Probably one? about 60. 60 pounds, okay, for a nesting one. And, it, you know, looks great, really nice. Um, these ones from Danny Orleans are... Half that price, I think they're twenty four ninety nine. Less than half. Less than half. Yeah. And also include a breakaway wand, as you've seen in the previous video. Um, I think they're great. What do you think? I think yeah. I mean, it's I always whenever anyone came to the shop and um, asked for kids ones, I I love the nesting ones. I think the kids think it's really funny, and you can have them trying to hold five ones at any time, which is yeah um, goes down well. It's exactly. a good photo opportunity. Yeah, it's really as well. funny. Um, 
But whenever anyone saw them or they were getting into it, you know, you put a £60 price tag on it, it's just, you know, not worth it unless you know what you're going to do with it. So I think just... And plus, you get the addition of the breakaway one, um, which is, again, a classic of Kids Magic in itself, but you also, you're buying that as part of this purchase, so you've also got to take into account the price of that on top of Oh, yeah, yeah. price wise, it's brilliant. Um, in terms of the quality, these are, these are lovely, and we, Pop Dog, do sell... Uh, a deluxe version just like this with but without the tapered ends but they have a holographic uh glittery holographic finish rather than a yeah same um, quality yeah but exactly the same quality and they are 55 pounds we sell them for they are brilliant don't get me wrong they're much stronger they'll last a lot longer right <laughs> and um and alexa stop longer you can't buy them with longer no. um but yeah, for the price, if you're new to Kids Magic or, or you just want to try a set of nesting ones without spending £55, uh, I can't really recommend this highly enough. Yeah, brilliant. I mean, the only it's only slightly better, like, ends. Like, the finish, yeah, the yeah, finish, the finish is, is better, better on this one. You know, in a kids' show, they're really not going to notice. It's just that um, I think if I'd have bought that first, I probably wouldn't have gone up to the 55 no. yet. You'd like, have no need to. Uh, no, and, until they break and then maybe I'd be... But yeah, for the price of getting both those things, like they're almost almost essential. Yeah. To have in a, in a kid's one, really. Brilliant. So that's what we think. Easy. Go for it. Oh, and you haven't stopped yet, have you? This comes with ten routines for using nesting ones. Now, that's normally good. nesting ones don't come with anything because ah. it's pretty self-explanatory how it works. Uh, so I was just shut himself in the garden. Um, yeah, it comes with ten routines. They've got paper ball good. over the head routines where they're dropping. The tube behind themselves and the kids are laughing. Makes a bit of a noise. Sorry, Bruce. And uh, but there's loads. There's routines that you can do on your own. There's routines you can do with one child, two children, four yeah. children. He didn't even need to do that. Not with the price. No, you don't need to do that. But he's done it. Yeah. And uh, they talk about how to fix them if the ends ever do pop off, which it's is just relatively easy. Yeah. So yeah, uh, we highly recommend it. Yes, we do. See you soon. Ish. Amazing. So uh, that was Amaze Ones. Um, thank you, Jason. Thank you, Luke. Uh, and thank you, Alexa, for that as well. So, uh, yeah, good old Alexa. I wonder how many people watching now have got Alexa on. Um, Alexa, phone mum. <laughs> A whole load of people now going, oh, no, 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 stop. <laughs> Okay, guys, yeah, so um, that's uh, Maze Wand is £25, I believe. So, uh, yeah, we've got about five or six in stock. Uh, right, uh, Agent Tritton, Andy Nyman's Golden Rules of Acting, another great book uh, and at a price you should all get one. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Scott Farrington says, uh, I got told off for reading the back of a DVD cover DVD cover in Mike Donata's shop, so I basically couldn't look into what I was buying. Thank God for Prop Dog opened up uh, and... I will never go back to Mike's shop. Funny enough, Scott, I had a very similar experience. So it was about a year after Mike's shop opened. I was living in Fairham at the time, which so he was my nearest magic shop. And I went down there to visit him. And uh, I was still working for a pro at the time. And I kind of walked over to the shop and I picked something off the shelf and looked at it. And he says, uh, excuse me, uh, put that down, please. I'm like, oh, well, really sorry. He says, I want to look at something. Um, uh, you ask me uh, and I'll tell you where they can. I'm like, okay, yeah, really, really sorry. So I picked up a DVD on the shelf and looked at the back of it. And he just said, excuse me, I've just told you not to look at things. And I thought, whoa, that's it. So I walked out of the shop and I never went back again. And uh, yeah, it's one of the things I learned when I uh, opened the shop here is the, you know, I don't want to give anyone that experience. If, if they found us as the magic shop, they're interested in magic, they've got the right to be able to look at what they're buying and find out about it. So, um, uh, yeah, uh, that's my experience with Mike. I mean, I like Mike. I get on well with him now as a dealer, uh, as a fellow dealer. But, um, yeah, back in the day, I never went back. It's a bit of a shame. Uh, right. Uh, Otto was laughing away. Um, <laughs> again, again, says Nigel. Um, yeah, it was, it was funny, wasn't it? Uh, breakaway ones obviously double as nunchucks <laughs> for squirrels. Um, uh, lots of comments for Jason. Funny Jason, they all like that. Uh, Jonah says Tim also uh, makes a great chop cup where you can turn the gimmick on and off, which means that both gimmicked balls uh, and the cup can be handled by the spectator. Amazing! I did not know that. Thanks for the tip there, uh, Jonas. Um, Alexa starts as Andy Tingley. Um, my mum's answered as well, no. <laughs> Cheers, Dave, Alexa, phone my mum. Yay! Brian <laughs> uh, Robson, I always tell my parents, Alexa, to put four candles on their shopping list. 
<laughs> yep, Alexa just called my mum. Oh, brilliant stuff. <laughs> There's got to be some ammunition here for the next live, I think. Uh, uh, bye, Dave. Thanks for Friday Entertainment. <laughs> Uh, right, okay guys, um, so before we finish up, um, we're going to kind of give do some giveaways, but we're not giving it away as such, you've got to earn your giveaway this time. So we have four products, okay, um, I have uh, the Switch by Shin Lim, we have Error 404 by the, uh, the Twins, uh, we have Travel, uh, who is by, uh, yeah, Michael Chatelain, uh, Travel, and then we have Ripper by Matthew Wright. Now. Because we're on the lockdown, because we haven't got the staff in here to talk too much about different products, I thought, why not send some products out to somebody out there who can do a review for us and video that review, get the video review back to us, and then we'll put their review of the product on the live show during the live. So that way we get a giveaway to somebody and in return, we get a little review back about it. So it doesn't matter whether you think it's good or bad. Personally, if it's bad, I want you to say it's crap, it's shit, whatever. If it's good, I want you to say it's good. Mediocre, so it's mediocre. So what I need is some volunteers to do some things. We've got Ripper, Travel, Error 404, and uh, the Switch by Shin Lin. So, um, yeah, for example, uh, Switch by Shin Lin. Does anyone want to do this? If you want to do a video review by uh, the Switch, uh, put the word, um, uh, oh, the people are already doing them. Okay, put your names up there, uh, and what we'll do, because we're going to get a load of people, it'd be awkward to show which one's which, what we'll do after the show, I'll go through, and I'll just randomly pick one of you on there, uh, and just choose that as a name. So, if you want to do one of something specific, specific, so if you want the Switch, Error 404, Travel or the Ripper, just put that word on it, and then after the show, I'll go through them all, and then I'll, I'll just randomly choose somebody, and I'll send that to you um, during the week. And if you can film a, a video of that, your own little review, just on your iPhone is fine, any camera you've got, send it back to us by uh, WeTransfer is a good one, it's a free one. Uh, and then we'll put it up on the live uh, next week or the week after, it depends on whether we want to do, I don't want to do four reviews in one go, but uh, we'll probably do two quick reviews. Um, don't make it a long review, so I, I, what I don't want is a review that's going on for about 10 minutes, just a quick, maybe three, three to six minutes would be ideal for a review. Um, so yeah, you can continue adding your list, uh, your name to the list. Uh, in fact, what I'll do is I'll pick somebody over the weekend. So um, that way, in fact, no, I'll do it Monday because I'll send them out Monday anyway. That way, if anyone's watching this over the weekend by YouTube or by um, uh, Facebook, you can leave a message on Facebook. If you're watching by YouTube, go back to Facebook, leave a message on that uh, saying you want to do it. And then I'll write them all down and I'll randomly just pick one uh, and we can do it that way. Because uh, as I can see now, I'll get loads of people wanting to just do reviews. If I could choose you all, I would, but uh, we can't do that, unfortunately. So uh, let me scroll back up and see if there's any more comments before we finish up for the day. Uh, I thought maybe one or two people would volunteer. We've got loads of people. Um, they're all just people commenting. Um, so what we'll do, there's a lot of people wanting to do it, so those that I pick, um, we'll send them out, and then uh, next time we'll do some more reviews, and we can make this an ongoing thing, we'll send some more stuff out to people as well, and uh, if you've done one review, we'll choose somebody else the next time, so that everyone gets a little go and, and gets something free as well. So, um, uh, Nigel Quinn says, I've got the t-shirt, I'll do a ripper. <laughs> uh, wow, loads of people. You all want to do reviews. Excellent. This is great news. Um, don't think any of those have fit my style. Cool idea though, says Otter. Yeah, Otter, they're, they're not really good for blowing up. I mean, Ripper might blow up quite well, but uh, the other ones, they'd be quite small explosions. Wouldn't really suit you too well. Uh, right. It looks like they're all just people. So, uh, yep, yeah, that's about it. So, guys, uh, thank you all for joining us once again. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Um, I doubt if anyone will be out gigging this weekend. So, chill out, take it easy. It's going to be a nice weekend. Enjoy the weather. And we will catch up with you this time. Uh, well, not this time, but uh, 4 o'clock uh, next Friday. So, uh, see you later, guys. And thanks again for joining us.